Hey, hi, I'm Phil Vetterkind. I am from Sustainable Building Solutions, and uh, I was the lead consultant on this project. Hi, my name is Mike O'Connor. I'm with Dominion Properties. Hi, my name is Sloan Peterson, and I'm also with Dominion Properties. Hi, welcome everybody. This is Brett Little with the uh, Green Home Institute coming to you live from a LEED Platinum project up here in uh, in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Let's take a quick look. We are coming to you downtown. You can see the whole area. And we're going to go through and take an entire building tour of this building and then we're going to be taking a tour of another building. Uh, I'm dropping into the notes section here a packet with more details about the project right into the comments so you can download that and we're gonna go ahead and talk a little bit about the solar right now um, about on this project great well welcome to the building this is called sage on prospect sage is a green color because this is a green building uh, sage is also a wise person so we call this smart green living on the roof here we have a 30 kilowatt solar array of 96 panels in addition to this, these panels are mounted over a blue roof, which is an innovation. I think it's the first one in Wisconsin, a blue roof. And what it is is a retention pond. It holds about 8,000 gallons of water uh, until a certain time that the Milwaukee Metropolitan Sewage District calls for the water to be dropped into the combined sewage system. And you can see these three smaller solar panels on top of the uh, downspouts uh, is where that takes place. Each one of these panels has a microinverter on it, so it converts the energy right there to alternating current and then sends it into the meter system. Um, the neat thing about that is that we have Wi-Fi connection to each one of these 96 panels, and we can see the value being produced by each one of these panels as it happens. So if we have a failure of one panel, we can pick that panel out and, and replace it. It's kind of fun to watch on your phone, too. <laughs> We have a display in the lobby where it goes over that. Yeah, and we're going to go down there and, and check that out here in a little bit. How normal is it for um, buildings here in Milwaukee to utilize solar like this? Uh, well, we have the distinction of being uh, one of the only, it's actually, there's two lead platinum multifamilies in the entire state of Wisconsin, and we built both of them. And so uh, this is very unusual to have a multifamily apartment building with the solar panels on it at all, let alone a 30 kilowatt array like this, which provides almost all, uh, in peak sunlight, almost all the buildings use. Mm -hmm. It's uh, pretty exciting for me as a landlord to know that we're uh, discounting our electric bill uh, by this large amount. Right. And everyone can see it's a pretty foggy, cloudy day today, but we'll probably notice that we're still generating once we head downstairs and That's take right. a look. That's right. I think so. there was like uh, two or three kilowatts already being generated yeah. as we spoke. All right. And when it snows, that's not a problem at all? Uh, well, you know, there's a lot of wind up here, which yeah. is great. It keeps the solar panels clear. And because they're really dark, almost black, uh, that solar energy from the sun helps to melt away the snow. Great. Well, let's head down and uh, check out the building, one of the units. Right. Let's get a shot of the harbor. I'm going to go this way. <laughs> the, uh, the roof is a TPO, and it's a uh, light color to help reflect uh, sunlight in the summer when the air conditioning is running, so it's not so hot for the other four units. You can walk down face out. This way? Yep. Okay. Everybody, it's going to be a little bumpy as we climb down, but... You can talk a little bit about the... Why don't we talk a little bit about the recycling uh, opportunities here? Great, yeah. This is one of the innovations we have in this building. We, we've invented a few things to help uh, keep it green. Uh, this is a standard garbage chute. Uh, most buildings have one. You open this up and it shoots the garbage down into a dumpster. But we've added an innovation where you press this green button and down below there's a diverter, a big metal panel which swings over and takes the recycling in the same chute as a garbage chute and shoots it over into the recycling dumpster. So that saves people 
a trip and we think it helps promote recycling because people don't have to take that much time to drag it down in the elevator and do it by, by hand. Great. Instruction here in the app for him. <laughs> yes, good to have instructions. <laughs> All right, so this is one of the units we're going to be checking out today. This is the only available in the building, which is P7, which is our smallest floor plan. But it's a very uh, compact design. In all of our SAGE buildings, we've eliminated the uh, concept of having a kitchen island. Uh, if you have a kitchen island, it takes up so much space, it takes away from the uh, ability to have a big dining room table and have friends over and really determines how you have to lay out the apartment. So by eliminating this and doing a European open concept, it allows people to decide how they want to arrange the apartment. If they want an island, they go to Ikea, they buy a kitchen island. Mm -hmm. If they don't, they can have a nice big table in here and have you know, a dozen friends over there to the last supper. Mm -hmm. And uh, tell us a little bit about the appliances. and uh... Sure, and part of the lead process is we had to locally source uh, the appliances. So, uh, all of these Maytag uh, appliances, with the exception of the microwave, are all made in Ohio, uh, which is under the 700 miles uh, for being locally produced for the uh, homes. So we're pretty excited to buy American. It's a quality piece of machinery, and it's also a very low carbon uh, footprint because it didn't have to be transported from around the world. Mm -hmm. What about the uh, lighting? Uh, all the lights in here, including the under cabinet lights, and even the fireplace over there is all LED, so it's very low energy. Mm -hmm. One of the principal benefits of living in the Sage property is that all utilities are included. We include heat, air conditioning, electricity, internet. Everything's included. And the reason why we do that is because we're such an efficient building, we can afford to do it. Mm -hmm. And we think it's a green way to live. Sure. And one of the things that we'll touch on in just a minute is a geothermal source heating and cooling, which really, um, for me as a landlord, is very inexpensive to provide. Great. Let's take a quick uh, peek outside here. Yeah, let's talk about some of the sustainability features in the so, bathroom. So one of the features here at the restrooms, since we're, this is our only bathroom in the place, is actually our fit, our, we have a continuously running um, vent fan. <coughs> and so these are really high efficient fans, so they're only taking about three watts, mm -hmm. but they're continuously exhausting 24 seven, and really that small use of energy, but what they're doing is exhausting about somewhere around 30 CFM, depending on uh, unit size and things like that. What that does is continue to get you fresh air in here. Because we build these buildings so tight, and there's very little air leakage, what that does is help keep that fresh air in here, keep, basically keep dry air, keep it um, you know, keep us away from mold and things like that. So it's one of the, a, a great feature to keep fresh air in. Mm -hmm. and, and so is this an exhaust only strategy for this, or is there a supply? Uh, this actually, no, there is, this is exhaust only. Correct? Okay. Yes. Yeah. And so how, how about some of the uh, water um, features for the bathroom? And... Well, it's pretty standard water features as far as, well, now what I consider standard now, we're at. I think we're at 1.28 gallons per flush toilets. Mm -hmm. We're at 0.5 gallons per lavatories, um, and so pretty standard. And I think I think we're at 1.5 for kitchen faucets. So um, I guess as far as sustainability goes, it's it's, it's lower than normal. Mm -hmm. um, pretty standard stuff. One of the things that where I was worried too when people uh, we have really um, high quality shower heads too. Because it's one thing even if you're in a sustainable building, you want to have a nice <laughs> nice shower with plenty of water. Let's just take a look at the uh, bathroom. And these are all um, uh, locally sourced or more locally sourced uh, water applications, right? right. Yeah. Most water everything is from Kohler, and uh, the cabinets are made locally uh, in Wisconsin. Oh. So uh, uh, as much as possible, we, we source it as close as possible. Sure. Let's get the bathroom right here. I noticed for a brand new building, I don't really smell too much. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, one, one of the things we have is we, we sourced um, the luxury vinyl plank from a company called Earthworks. Uh, the reason why we chose Earthworks is the uh, quality of the vinyl mm -hmm. is very high and is very low outgassing. It has almost no smell. So even a brand new floor like this 
doesn't have a lot of vinyl smell to it, which has mm -hmm. uh, been uh, very well received from the people who live here, which is exciting. I just opened up the, the door for the uh, heating and cooling system. We have a Bosch um, ground source heat pump, which provides both the heating and the air conditioning. Um, the groundwater, which we'll see in a minute, is uh, about 60 degrees on average mm -hmm. around the world, and it's pumped in and out of here. And so that is the touchstone for which this heat pump runs to provide both heat and air conditioning. Mm -hmm. Great. Well, let's head uh, downstairs then. Great. Yeah. One of the things that you find with Lee's building, especially in a new construction setting, is a lot of times when you walk into a new building, you have that new building smell. Well, the Lee building, most of the time, you don't have any smells. Mm -hmm. and people, that's sometimes the first thing they'll notice when they walk into a new building, and mm -hmm. this is no different, where you walk in and you, you don't have necessarily that new new home smell or that new smell because there's no, that, that off-gassing is not there. And it, uh, also added with your continuous ventilation, it just, it, you have a nice fresh smell. Right. And we made an effort to source zero VOC paint. Uh, from Sherwin Williams, that has uh, virtually no off gas in it, so it has uh, even freshly painted, you can't even smell it's on the walls. Mm -hmm. um, did you want to use the stairs? Yeah, why don't we head down the stairs? Right. You can head down the stairs right here. All right, great. We chose a font color for the, uh, the stair well handrail because this building has, um, as part of the first, second, and third floor, original beams to hold the structure up that are orange or red. And so we just decided to continue with the metal, the orange metal theme throughout the building. Uh, it's a uh, kind of a fun feature. I think it looks cool. It does add a lot of brightness and attractiveness to stairs, which usually sometimes, you know, aren't too attractive and people don't want to take them, right? They're dark, they're gloomy. Right. Through them, which mm -hmm. is a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. So we're making use of what's already here upside down in the building. So let's quick talk about the air leakage right around these. So one thing that we had as a, as a team to make sure that we were um, having air uh, infiltrate throughout the building was when we had these beams, we had to absolutely make sure that they're all sealed around them and make sure that air won't move from or along a beam. So that was mm -hmm. one, one of the, I guess, construction and, and um, air leakage rate um, issues that we had. So. It was challenging, but now at the end of the day, you see how it was actually pretty cool. Right. I'm noticing uh, thick windows. Uh, tell me a little bit about the thermal envelope, too. So our, our envelope, uh, we have a, a mic knows better, too, but okay. we also, so a lot of, on this existing building here, we actually have thicker walls, and so what we ended up doing was with the with the spray foam insulation, um, as a, on the interior side of the wall, of the of the existing walls, we had spray foam, mm -hmm. and then I believe there, I think, I think you know the rest, you did, did Anything else? They, they they did do I think a three inch bath of mineral wool. And that's right. That's what it was. That's what I was thinking. So, um, so it's very much so very good insulation, good qualities on it, which obviously reflected well on our energy model. You did lose too much space, making the walls a little bit thicker, but more efficient. Right? Well, we have these nice big window sills for people yeah. to put plants on. Yeah, exactly. There well, you go. To sit on. Nice seating. Yeah. Any of these? Stand, pretty standard windows or anything special with the you e value of those? The, the part of the lead process is that each exposure of the building has a different tinting uh, U value. Mm -hmm. oh. So the eastern, the southern, and the uh, different directions have a certain value. I can't remember which we use for, for which, but you know, the southern one's got a little more tinting for the yep. solar gain, right. less so in the north, more in the west, less so in the east. So right. each, each, each value is actually a different value. Yeah, I believe we're at 
Point two nine, I think, is what we were at. For you, Valiant? Yeah. Which, okay. Yeah, which is obviously good. Um, good. I'll make sure I don't lose some on. <laughs> oh. Down here we have storage cages to promote um, efficient use of the parking area. And this used to be the cafeteria for the nursing home, which was what this building was when we first bought it. Since it's noisy in here, I'm just going to kind of take a quick peek. Then we'll have you explain it. Well, these are the inverters. All right, so back out here and tell us what's going on in the HVAC. System. Sure. We have 24 geothermal wells that go down about 400 feet and they're daisy chained together and there basically is a radiator fluid running through them. There's a four and a half amp motor which runs this uh, loop of water through every unit. Mm -hmm. every unit. Every unit has a heat pump that touches on this water. So that's the ground source interface for everyone's heat pump. And the water is always at 60 degrees, um, summer, mm -hmm. winter, fall, everything. So uh, what we're able to do is use at 60 degrees to either add uh, heat to the unit to make it warm in the winter or to cool things down in the summer. Mm -hmm. It's a great interface and it's a great temperature to run a heat pump, so it's very efficient. Mm -hmm. And this is where you're getting your hot water from too as well? As a matter of fact, this is the only gas in the entire building uh, is this hot water heater, this boiler right here, which heats the domestic water, okay. uh, which is in these two tanks. So that's a 98% efficient boiler, okay. and that's the only gas that we use in the entire building. Okay. Otherwise it's an entirely electric building, correct? Exactly. Yeah. Yep. And that's why we're able to make such good use out of the 30 kilowatt array on the roof. Right. I know a lot of buildings use uh, like a variable refrigerant system VRFs um, and, or decentralized gas furnaces, so you just found it to be more efficient to go with geo. We, we like the look of having a forced air system where the ducts are hidden in the walls and yeah. we didn't have to have condenser heads on, on each wall where we needed to add mm -hmm. heat or uh, air conditioning. It also saves a lot of space because, as you saw, some of these units are only 850 square feet. And we wanted to make sure we didn't intrude into that area at all mm -hmm. with a, a, you know, a head that would stick out of the wall about six or eight inches. Mm -hmm. um, we think the system we have too is a lot quieter. Um, you know, because of having a, a ground source heat pump system, there are no condensers for air conditioners on the top of the building. So that means that the people on the top floor who are paying the top rents uh, don't have to listen to the air conditioners of the other residents in the building. Which right. is nice. So it's a nice quiet place to be. And a lot of urban projects Slight challenges for boring geo wells, but even in existing sites, you didn't have too many challenges doing that here. We got really lucky. We have a large parking lot on the yeah. north side of the building, so we were able to site the wells, you know, 30 feet from each other, so that there was no interactions. And we actually had room on the south side of the property to add some wells if we needed to, but uh, the calculations say that we don't have to. Okay, great. I noticed you have uh, electric car chargers down here. Exactly. Yeah, we have, uh, as you can see over here. We've got a Clipper Creek um, 30 amp charger over here, and uh, this is because of the large solar array on the roof. This is free for the tenants to use, and uh, uh, the nice thing about the Clipper Creeks is they are made in America, and they have a 25 foot cord, which I like. Uh, and then GE is so, and this is given to us for free by Clipper Creek, so we'll make sure to plug them. <laughs> and then we have another uh, one that we're given by General Electric. Uh, over here, which is the one you see with the green light, and that is uh, also a fine 30 uh, amp uh, charger as well. Okay, take a look at that. There's a charger. And I know these are typically worth innovation credits, but I think you guys had 
Great. maxed out many of your options yeah, for that. Uh, so. Obviously, as you see, we've had a lot of innovation credits throughout yeah. this project, and we actually, yeah, we actually ran out of innovation spaces, so mm -hmm. we didn't even get to take, take credit for that. So, mm -hmm. yeah, we have uh, LED lights in uh, all the common areas, and these in the basement have occupancy sensors. Two of them are running by the exits all the time. The rest of them turn off uh, depending on if someone's here or not. Sure. Why don't we head up to the the lobby? Yeah. Take the other stairs. <laughs> Oop. A little bit of Background noise there, sorry about that everybody. Take a look at the lobby while you're here. Alright, so this is the lobby and this is where we have a display going over the uh, output from the solar panels on the roof. You can see um, it's putting out uh, a little over a kilowatt right now, which is 1100 watts. Um, I would ignore this. I think this is probably not accurate. I was going to tell you it was a cloudy day. Those so. things are always uh, a little off huh? yeah. <laughs> sometimes. So I don't think we've produced that much energy. Yeah. Great. So uh, this lobby is a nice area for people to gather. Uh, we were able to grind the existing concrete floor uh, and make use of the space in here. So um, we have a lot of recycled elements uh, here as well. Um, And um, that's uh, pretty much it for the lobby. So would you want to go up front? Yeah, why don't we take a look at the building okay. from the outside in. Do you need something? I'm just waiting. Thanks. All right. Um, this is uh, a very busy street, but this is the finest address in the whole city of Milwaukee, which is Prospect. Uh, this is the Gold Coast of Milwaukee. Uh, this was a, a building that actually had some architectural challenge. The corners of the building were uh, fake split field stone from the 1970s, very uh, uh, colorful at that time, but had faded a lot over the years to a nice pink. Mm -hmm. So we were able to replace that with uh, some attractive brick. And we think that the uh, addition of this, the fourth and fifth floor uh, using standing seam siding uh, with an attractive element as well. So it really makes the, uh, the building stand out. And we happen to be right next to the Charles Ellis Museum and a turn of the century uh, painted lady Victorian, uh, which is on the National Historic Register. So we're in between two buildings that are on the National Historic Register, which is great. I'm gonna to try to get a snapshot of the whole building from the yeah. back here. So I'm trying to get one over. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Don't step on the street. We're not gonna make it now. <laughs> Oh, one thing I forgot to ask about, the uh, efficient elevator that you have. Yes, in building, yeah. we have a Schindler uh, machine roomless uh, ribbon elevator, which is, uh, according to the, the brochure, is 33% more efficient than a standard elevator. Mm -hmm. uh, so it saves a lot of energy. It's all electric as well. Great. Um, Bill, did you want to talk to us a little bit about uh, the, the trades training process that you pursued for this building? Yeah, it's absolutely. A... So the trades training, so what we, um, what we did is, We've learned through pro past projects is that if we, we basically get everybody who's involved with the project, especially the rough-in, drywall, all the trades guys, and when we do our first testing, we actually bring them in on the project as soon as we can. So basically, at our not only at rough-in do we bring them in and talk about what the process is of, of blower door testing and things like that, we actually um, also bring them in with its first drywall, so rocked and mudded, but really nothing else is done, and then we actually do our first blower door test just to show the guys in the field what exactly that they are doing and what they're what we're talking about because sometimes you, you don't really understand fully until you see it happen and so from there from there we actually um, um, throughout the rest of the process they get to be there involved so they're always invited they're always there when we when we do this testing and by the end what we what we normally see is at first we don't do necessarily do so well in the testing 
because of the training, but then by the end of the project, we're just doing testing. You know, those guys, it's, they know what they're doing throughout the rest of the project, and it um, becomes basically second, uh, second hand. With them. They, they fully understand the process. Right? And we found very, it's, it's been very helpful in all of our projects that we do, especially especially these the stage projects. Right. And as far as this location goes, uh, you're uh, you're talking about a. Uh, um, I mean, you've got a lot of connectivity here, I assume. You've got community resources, bike paths, bus lanes, oh, yes. and the whole thing. Yeah, we're pretty excited about the fact. On the other side of this building here is the uh, Oak Leaf Trail, which goes all the way from Milwaukee uh, all the way up to Door County, okay. which is a great biking path. And, of course, on the other side of the Oak Leaf Trail is Lake Michigan, and it's a very popular uh, lakefront park that mm -hmm. uh, everyone is able to access. And one block this way is the historic Green Street District. Where all the cool kids go hang out and have dinner and things like that. Great. All right. Well, uh, what can uh, people do if they want to? We're gonna we, we're gonna provide a, a handout, a packet with some more information sure. on the project, the checklist, so people can learn more about it. Uh, but where can people find out more information if they want to learn more? Well, please check out our website at www.dominionproperties.com. Uh, or if you look on the internet, you can find Sage on Prospect or Sage on Jackson. Okay. All right, and we're going to head over to Sage on Jackson right now, so we're going to sign off right now. But if anyone's listening, um, we'll be dialing back up in a little bit. So Great. Thanks. Okay, we're at Unit 305. This is Sage on Prospect. Uh, Leave for Homes, multifamily apartment. This is the final test day. We're setting our blower door up. We're doing a pressure flow at 50 CFM for air leakage. Okay. We'll do our baseline start. This unit is 932 square feet. Our target leakage, we have to be under 640 CFM so for this unit to pass five air changes per hour for lead. Five second average. We're getting close to our fifty CFM pressure rating. We're at five hundred and six. I'm going to hold it right there. We're testing the exhaust flow of the microwave. We have to hit 100 CFM. We have the top sealed because they're also drawing air from the top. This fixture is designed to capture all the air from the bottom of that inlet. And we're at 109. We're in unit 305 bathroom. This is the ventilation strategy for a whole unit. We're using a Delta continuous duty uh, rated fan with high speed boost. And this particular unit does have switch settings. This is the switch settings for this fan. Time and CFM, and this and it's adjusted by the HVAC contractor so that we hit a minimum of 23 CFM for this 932 square foot one bedroom unit, and then it will boost up to the higher speed. There's also a timer switch on the wall, so we can control it strictly by timer from five minutes to, to 30 minutes and off. Okay, this is total leakage to the outdoors test. Um, we've got a Wi-Fi hotspot set to this iPad, so it's telling us what the blower door is doing because we have to measure our base pressure at baseline at minus at 25, and then this would be our flow through the ring. We're concerned about this number and this number up here. This is the pressure on the system, but the difference is, is again, when we null it out, is the duct leakage to the outdoors. So I'm going to turn this on.
And we're in that 25 Pascal area in the duct system. Minus 4.7, 4.6 is the rough duct average with the system sealed. Okay, now we're at a 0.8 and we have to null that out. We null it out by adding air to the system through this fan. And we're pressurizing the unit and pressurizing the duct system. You can see we're at positive pressure, we have to go to zero. A low reading means duct leakage default of 10. You can see as we bring it up again, above zero. And that again is, is telling us that all the ducts are in the condition envelope. We're doing this for the Hertz score because this does impact the Hertz score total linkage to the outside. Okay, we're done with our duct test.